Welcome to the Spirit of a Badass, where we celebrate stories of courage, hope, and resiliency. I'm your host, Alicia Jacobson. Hello, badasses. Welcome to the show today. I'm super excited you're here. One of the things, if you've listened to the podcast or you follow me on social media, you know that I am a a strong advocate for women, but people in general sort of supporting themselves and kind of like they have the tools within and the, the capacity to figure out how to kind of take care of themselves and like they have the answers and they have the ability to find the answers. And my guest today is going to share with us how she figured out with her nursing background, how to heal and how she helps her clients heal. And I'm just really excited for this conversation. And I'm really excited for you to be here and part of this episode today. My guest today is Sarah. She is a holistic health and healing coach a keynote speaker, the author of Heal Yourself, a multi-award winning entrepreneur, and previously she was a registered nurse for 20 years. She has extensive experience in health and wellness gained from naturally self-healing, a multitude of health issues, and her work as a registered nurse. Sarah supports clients to find and heal the root cause of their health problems, thereby improving their health and ultimately their lives. Welcome, Sarah. Thank you. It's great to be yes, here. Yes, yes. It's so wonderful to have you. So give us a background, like tell us about you a little bit, just some like maybe fun things about you and who you are. Okay. Uh, I think I was a tomboy as a child. I came from a broken home, if you like, you know, back in those days when parents divorced, we were classed as children of broken homes. I went to three different secondary schools throughout my childhood and I left home at 17 on my 17th birthday because I so wanted that independence. My mum was a nurse so and I like the idea of being a nurse and helping people who are in vulnerable times to look after them and get them on the journey back to wellness. So I trained as a nurse and qualified in 2001. I met my husband 32, 33 years ago now. I married him after only a year and a half. And um, we moved to America with my nursing forever. That forever was two years. (laughs) We didn't quite fit in. (laughs) We moved back to the UK, to England specifically, and he got a job promotion. So we moved to Wales. And within a couple of three years, I came home one day from work and he said to move to Spain because his dad lives out here. So I'm like, well, why not? You know, in for a penny, in for a pound. Let's just, you know, the world's our oyster. We can do what everything's a choice. So, so we chose to move to Spain and I've been here nearly seven years now and, and living the life. It's really tranquil compared to England and America where it's all rush, rush, rush. So that's me in a nutshell. Ooh. Can we just pause there for a hot second and tell us more? What does that mean? What, which part of it? <laughs> when you're saying like it's really tranquil, like we have an idea of maybe what that means, but what does that actually mean for you in your life? Yeah. So in America, it was like we were always asked, you know, how much do you make and where do you live and what cars have you got? Basically, what kind of a lifestyle? So it was always, we always felt the need to be keeping up with the Joneses. And even in the UK, it's very similar, you know, people, you were judged on how you looked and where you worked and the cars you drive and the people you surround yourself with. So when we moved to Spain, we're in this little village, you know, high up in the mountains with only 1,500 people. There is no fashion. I have no idea what the fashion of today is. People drive 20 and 30-year-old cars. They don't change them. They just keep fixing them till they literally can't be fixed. The life is very simple. We have olive trees. I grow olives. I take them to the press. I get olive oil in return. It's just a really simple life for the the, the Spanish just live incredibly simply in a small community. They all know each other. They all help each other. And it's just so incredibly different. But it can be quite frustrating when you want a job done and everything's like, yeah, mañana, mañana, tomorrow, 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 <laughs> because it's so laid back. That's interesting. This is not at all what we are here to talk about, but I'm really interested in this. So I want to take a moment here. 
uh, one of the paths that I am currently exploring is kind of redefining success for myself. I got divorced. And in that process of that, I was kind of told about my worth. Like it, it, my worth was not th th that worth anything. I would never amount. So yeah. I went on this kind of path of proving. And that was all success driven, like the typical success and yeah. like things like that. And now I've sort of come to this maybe awakening, call it, that I don't really care about that anymore. Wonderful. Yes. And, but yes. I'm sort of, because I am here in America where, so that's, it's constantly put in my face and how do I have both? How do I kind of, because I'm being pulled towards this kind of, it doesn't yeah. matter. This stuff doesn't matter and kind of redefining that. But what I'm really interested in, because that has to have a physical and that's what we're here to talk about, but I would like to hear what has been the the state of your body moving from that kind of status driven hustle busy is like glorified to this very laid back and chill we make our own olive oil <laughs> what what happens yeah and and i hear you because i've walked that path people pleasing got to keep getting more qualifications got to keep proving my worth and i have so many qualifications to try and feel worthy from other people's opinions and and what is success and initially we're all about it's all about the head you know it's about making money it's about the cars we drive it's about the houses it's how we look that's how we define success where am I in my business but actually we can come into our heart and go what does success mean I have a roof over my head I have food in my fridge and in my pantry I have a car that works and gets me from A to B. I can pay my bills and I can do the work that I want to do when I want to do it. And, you know, any one of those is success or altogether is success. So we can look at it and reframe it in different ways. We can define our own success and let go of the opinions of others. And success is whatever we want it to be. So that in itself is such a, a lesson of stepping out of the matrix, being badass, if you yes. like, you know, stepping out of that, that box that people want to put us in and doing what we want to do. And once we are financially free, we have no debt, we're just working to pay the bills that, and the bills are what we make them. You know, if we use a lot, we pay a lot. If we use less, we pay less. So it's about redefining how we, think of success and what makes us free you know what makes us able to do what we want to do so in the lead up to that working in America it was always hustle 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 you know I had a, a job which effectively paid me double the salary I was on in the UK so I'm like great I'm going to be earning a lot more money and we can do more things and then when we moved out there, we moved to Florida and I'm like, so everything is four times the price it is in the UK. So I had to take a second job on as a registered nurse. So I was working two jobs to try and, you know, live a life. That was part of the reason we moved back to the UK because, you know, we the grass is greener where you water it, obviously. But it, but the UK, it was, it was comfortable to us. We knew it. And the, the pace of life wasn't quite as hectic as America. And I didn't need to work two jobs to pay bills. So we moved back to the UK and back to what we knew. And yes, there was still some hustle and there was still the idea of fitting in and having, you know, new things and nice cars and nice clothes and, and having a certain image that, you know, businesswoman, professional but not quite to the level of America. And then my husband got promotion. We went to Wales and because of his promotion, it was like, so we felt even more of the need to fit into this executive role now. So we upgraded the cars and the clothes. So we were still playing that game in the matrix. And when we moved to Spain, we were broke because we piled everything we had into the house so we could live debt free. But we knew it would be transient as we worked and obviously recouped some money. Then we could do a bit more with our lives. And that was nearly seven years ago now. And, and once we paid off everything and, and started to save money because we were just now we're working just to pay the bills. 
or have nice days out, we're working a lot less. So we've now become semi-retired rather than both working full time or even more hours than full time. And we, we do what we want basically when we want and we schedule time in like Wednesday. Now we've, we've just been out for the day, the whole day and neither of us have worked. And, you know, we, we can just, it's about choosing how you want to live your life. Because yes, there are English people here who have big pensions and, and live the life, the executive life, doing whatever they want, whenever they want. But conversely, you can choose to just live within your means. And, you know, we don't have to live a frugal life, but we can definitely live a more relaxed life than we ever did in, in the UK or in America. And it's, it's about choices. You know, you, you work to pay the bills. If you want more things, you work a bit more. If you want, if you're happy with less, you, you do less, you know, grow fruit and vegetables and olives and almonds and I've saved the rainwater and water my fruit and vegetable plants and we just live within our means how does that feel in your body freeing incredibly freeing because even though we were earning the money in the UK to live that executive lifestyle we felt tied into it it's like like we've got to keep up this appearance it was it's a mindset but it we were drawn into that mindset so we we still knew that we had to work the hours and jobs that we did to keep up that lifestyle so there was an element of stress there yes the the lifestyle was wonderful but we couldn't do it without working the hours that we were working and the jobs that we were working whereas in spain we work to pay the bills and and have money and do things that we want to do. And it's incredibly freeing to know that I can take a week off. I can take a month off if I wanted to. Our bills are so low. We don't need to work excessive hours because we haven't got high bills. But yet we can go out and have days out or have a meal out or go out for the day and just drive around and, and see places we have we take so much joy from just going out to the beach or the forest or walking in the country you could do so much for so little and it just it's just soul nourishing hmm. i like that soul nourishing you're so correct there when you say it's a mindset and i know everybody has different lives different you know financial expectations put on them whether it's you know the the things that they're choosing or things outside of their control however the kind of excess stuff, the the mindset of that, I have to keep up with the Joneses, that that idea yes. of that, that is a choice. And that's something that, you know, we're kind of taught and we buy into it unknowingly and then we start living it, but we can choose. And that's the path I'm on now is realizing yeah. like, oh, that I don't have to do this. This is not like, I don't have to buy into this idea of material and that success is defined by, you know, whatever society defines it, I can define it however I want. And then it's that sort of being uncomfortable and living that way because it is uncomfortable because it's something that I'm not used to doing. And that that's what happens with change. change. Mm -hmm. Yeah. It's, it's change. And once you, it's the other part of that as well is letting go of other people's opinions because everybody will have an opinion of who they think you should be. And and there's, there's thousands of you in other people's eyes because everybody's got their own opinion of who they think you are based on the interactions that you've had with them. So once you can let go what people think of you and just be free and do what you want to do because it's your choice, the more you do it, the easier it gets. But it is once you start stepping out of that lifestyle, those beliefs that you've had all your life, it is uncomfortable. And, and we're comfortable in the familiar, mm-hmm. regardless of what that familiar is, whether it's chaos or lots of work or a mindset. So when we step out of that, it does cause us discomfort. But once we remember that we're on a path for ourselves, not for other people, we're living our lives the way we want to to live it the way we choose to live it, it gets so much easier. Yeah. I want to just repeat what you said, because I think it was 
brilliant. There are thousands of you in other people's eyes. And as soon as you can let go of other people's opinions, and that is, I mean, spot on because every single person you either know or acquaintance, whatever, they all view you through their mindset, through their lens, and you are different in each of them. And I get, you know, it does matter. Like you don't want to be out being an asshole, but you can't control other people's opinions of you. And if you can get to that point where you can really start to shed that and drop that need to show up and present as a certain persona in all these different situations, that's freedom. It is. It is. And I love to say, because some of my family call me crazy because I think differently to how they do. And I like to say, some people call me crazy, but other people come to me for advice. (laughs) I think crazy is good. I feel like if you're getting called crazy, that is a compliment. Absolutely. Please don't call me normal. Right? I mean, (laughs) unless it's like crazy, crazy. I feel like there's like, we got like levels here, but just regular crazy. I'm like, yes, please. Thank you. I appreciate the compliment. (laughs) All right. You are living a lifestyle that absolutely promotes health outside, inside your mind, your body, but take us to when you were not. You had some health issues which kind of propelled you on this path that you're on now. So t- tell us a little bit about that. Yeah. So obviously I was nursing and um, qualified in 2001 and moved to America in 2004. In 2005, one of my nurse colleagues questioned me about taking pharmaceuticals at home. And you know what you're like? She's a nurse. We're all about pharmaceuticals. That's what we do. It's our job. But the the curiosity got the better of me. And I went home and I started looking at pharmaceuticals. What are they? And as you know, the downside, the risks. And holy moly, (laughs) doors that opened. (laughs) It's a rabbit hole. I mean, you can go, yes. Yes. It's a whole warren. (laughs) Yes. Proceed with caution. And it's empowering. <laughs> yes. And every night I'm researching and I'll go to my husband like, oh my God, you would never believe what I've just read. Literally every night he's like, what now? What now? What now? I'm just, it was mind blowing because of the way I was raised in that pharmaceutical medical model. It was totally mind blowing. So more and more and more research. So I started to believe that my body might be able to heal itself. First of all, I started off with psoriasis, eczema, and acid reflux. Healed all of those by reducing stress, walking a little bit more outside in the sunshine, and stopping eating gluten and dairy. And healed all three of those within, I'd say, within a month maximum. Healed the lot. And then I was looking at, I had a candida infection that I'd gone back to pharmaceuticals because I just wanted rid of it. But two years down the line, still on pharmaceuticals, I'm like, I'm done. I mean, this is enough. And then started looking at what else I could do. Again, cut out cut out sugar and carbohydrates and healed that candida. Had chronic joint pains in my neck, in my lower back, in my hip. Had acupuncture and chiropractic manipulation at the time, didn't realize those emotional components, just still in that physical, because when we think of healing at first, we think about the physical stuff. What can I, how can I eat better? How can I hydrate better? How can I sleep better? Do I take enough exercise? And we tend to think all those in that physical plane. So that's where I was at. You know, what else can I do? The chiropractor manipulate me, stick needles in me and the pain went. Um, and then I spiraled into a deep, dark depression. Uh, something happened and I felt out of control and I went further and further into darkness and eventually ended up with suicidal thoughts. So I went to the doctor. I did, he um, diagnosed depression and, and he's like, well, come back every month. And I think he was just checking up on me, make sure I was still alive. So I I did that, but I didn't know what to do and I couldn't really think about what to do and I couldn't think logically and rationally to go on the internet and start looking at, I just didn't want to do anything and literally shut down. And had a friend used to pick me up every Wednesday and take me to the gym and Wednesday was the day I drank water because I went to the gym. That was the only day I drank water. (laughs) 
and I had dogs, so I had to take the dogs out walking. So I was outside twice a day in the fresh air walking, but head down, didn't want to talk to anybody, didn't want to interact with anything. And I, it was one day while I was out walking, I don't know, months down the line, I think it was, I I looked up and there was spring and the trees were in bud and there was flowers growing and there was a bit of blue sky and suddenly I felt lighter. I didn't feel so heavy and and dark. And from there, I started then thinking, oh, well, you know, what else can I look for? And without knowing it, I was practicing mindfulness and gratitude. It was only like months or even years down the line. And I looked back and I'm like, so that's what I was doing without even knowing it. And as I started to feel lighter, I started to look at doing some meditation initially just to find that peace within myself. And then I started doing longer meditations, guided meditations, because I couldn't just sit and meditate. The silence, the, the noise in my head was awful. So I was listening to these guided meditations and I started getting longer and longer ones. And then I started looking at what can I do in my future? So my husband said, why don't you set up a business? Well, I never had a business, didn't know anything about business. So I'm like, well, I'll go and take some classes. So I started to meditate on being an entrepreneur, but... I didn't just want to be any entrepreneur because, you know, when that unseen, unheard child needed awards as an entrepreneur to be validated. So I started meditating on that. And then in our future, started meditating on, you know, having an abundant future and being free and living the life that we wanted to live. So anyway, I set up a business. I stepped out of the hospital, set up my business, but I was still a nurse doing some medical legal work and some DNA sampling. And I was training the hospital staff on their mandatory annual updates. So doing different jobs, but still as a nurse. And I won awards for the work I was doing because I'd written a booklet for hospital staff to do a task. I won an award locally, and then I was entered into a national freelancers competition for the whole of the UK. And I came second in that. So I won that award. But I wasn't I was, it was great being that entrepreneur, doing the work that I wanted to do and being diverse in it as well. But it wasn't fully nourishing my soul. I was enjoying it, but it didn't give me what I was looking for. So once I'd started healing, I decided I could help other people to do the same. So I trained as a coach, which is where I found and understood more parts to healing. Outside of the physical, we also have to deal with the mental, which is the mindfulness, the gratitude, the meditation, but also challenging our mind, you know, either doing crosswords, playing games here in Spain, learning Spanish, but just keeping that mind active in in positive, creative ways. When I did my coach training, I realized there was an emotional part. That was the last piece of the jigsaw. We have to heal our past. We have to heal the traumas we've been through. And it's not so much about the trauma itself, although that is important. But what is more important than the trauma itself is how we hold it, how we perceived what happened to us and how we hold that. And over time, our memories can actually fade about that trauma. But our emotions are still there deep within us and they can get triggered and we can have over emotional responses. And that's the reason we need to heal the trauma to reduce our over emotional ex, uh, expressions and responses. And, and in healing our past, we're doing it for ourselves. We're not doing it for anybody else because those people that hurt us, chances are they've moved on in their lives. They've forgotten what they did. It didn't even register in them that the, the devastation it caused within us. So that healing, that that forgiveness and letting go of the past of the people involved isn't for them. It's for us to allow us to offload that burden of carrying that. And the the fourth and final part is the spiritual side of it, as in coming back into ourselves and getting to know that inner voice, making friends with it again. Whatever name we give it, God, the divine, the angels, the universe, my inner wisdom, my higher self, it doesn't matter the name, but there's a little voice inside of us that we need to come back into. And we can find that better when we meditate or or walk out in nature to be with our thoughts and nature. But it's the emotional part that I didn't know was missing until I trained as a coach. 
And once I'd trained as a coach, I then surrendered my nursing license to help other people to help themselves in the way I'd managed to heal myself because we can heal ourselves. You know, doctors don't always realize the ability that that we can have once we set our mind and change our beliefs because, you know, my beliefs previously was when I'm sick, I need a doctor and medications to totally 180 flip to when I'm sick, I know my body can heal itself. So it's a mindset and belief change that we have to be able to do to be able to tap into our own body wisdom and, and natural healing ability. Yeah. I grew up in a very like my mom. Oh, my mom, the torture. She used to make me drink orange juice with uh, Knox gelatin in it. She would pour, do you know, Knox gelatin? It's like, it's what you make jello with. It's, it, it's supposed to be good for bone health. So she would put it in orange juice and it would coagulate. And I, yeah. And I would have to drink it. And she would make me do all these weird things to like support my body and be healthy. So I grew up in this sort of like, I would have just the things that I had to do to be healthy. This is like a journey that I have experienced and I help people on things like that. So do you. But if this is a new concept where somebody in in Western medicine, like it has its purpose, it absolutely has its purpose. But if this is a new concept for somebody, like you said, eczema, psoriasis, you know, things where acid reflux, because tell me if I'm wrong, but when you take medication for that, doesn't it make it actually worse where if you do? Yes. Yeah. Okay. That's what I thought. Yeah. So, so can I elaborate yes, on that? We have acid reflux because there isn't enough acid in our stomach to close the sphincter. So the acid comes back up because it's still open. We need more stomach acid. So when we take those antacid medications, it comes, yes, it stops the acid, but then, you know, you you haven't got the acid in your stomach to to neutralize pathogens, bacteria, viruses that, that you're ingesting. So then they become systemic. They spread around your body. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, So can you tell someone if this is a new concept to them of healing yourself where do they begin because it also is a mindset it's a mindset that hey i have the power and it goes beyond i mean i work with people on you know stress because stress i mean it it does all these crazy things to your body and your well-being but if this is a new concept for them where do they even sort of start because like you said googling that rabbit hole can be a little and by a little i mean a lot overwhelming Yeah, and Google sensors, right? (laughs) So Google's not your platform. (laughs) So where to start? The first part, the first step is to believe in your body's ability and capability to heal. Because when we cut ourselves and bruise ourselves, we don't think, oh, I need to go to the doctor. I wonder how I'm going to heal. Nope, we go, we'll just look at it and go, that'll heal. Or, you know, we'll stop the the bleeding and that'll that'll heal. My body will heal. Well, if our body can heal that, why can it not heal anything else? And it can. We just need to support it a little bit more. So the first step is to believe in your own innate ability. We're born with this body wisdom in its own ability to heal itself. So if we just need to support our body a little bit more, as I say, in the physical, the mental, the emotional, and the spiritual planes. Which is kind of stepping out of that busyness that we began talking about, because if you're so focused on overachieving all of those things, there's no time left over, most likely, just given the sampling of people that I've worked with, there's no time left over to even focus on healing your body. You're not outside listening to the birds and calming your nervous system. You're frantically going from one thing to the other, wondering why you're so stressed out and how do I, how do I be healthy? Yeah. Yeah. Even, even taking a a glass of water, a cup of tea, a cup of coffee outside first thing in the morning when the sun's coming up and just sitting there for five or 10 minutes, watching the sun rise, it normalizes your circadian rhythms and it helps you to sleep at night. And that's just being at one with nature for five or 10 minutes in the morning. But we can also go outside for a walk 
we can just move our body, put some music on and dance. You know, there's so much that we can do to help ourselves. Do more of what you like to do, what you love to do, in fact. Just do more of that and find time to fit it in. Because when we're doing what we love to do, we're nourishing our soul. I mean, it really is soul medicine, if you like. Uh, That's a great place to start. You know, when you when you look at it, it it could be overwhelming when you look at the the physical, the mental, the emotional, and the spiritual work all together. But if you just take it one bit at a time, one step at a time, as somebody once said, a little baby step is better than a lot of nothing. Yes. But it, it is working out what you like to do, what you love to do, what you enjoy to do. It really is taking that moment, that, that step back and coming back into yourself and going, what do I like? Because when I stepped outside of, of nursing, I always wanted to be a nurse. I saw myself as a nurse until I, the day I died, unless I was had to be pensioned off. And so to step outside of that took a massive mindset change. And then, and I think we can get attached to our position as well. You know, who are you? Well, I'm a nurse. No, no, that's what you are. Who are you? And, And when we come into ourselves, who am I? Well, a lot of people can't answer that question because they don't know who they are because they've conditioned themselves to do for others because they value other people's opinions. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's a big, that's something my daughter was, I don't know how we got onto it. It was going before going to bed and she was kind of talking about her as how she would be as an adult. And she was saying things like, I want people around me that I know I can really trust and that I can laugh with and I can have fun with. And I'm like, never once did she talk about what she wants to quote unquote be when she grows up. She really was talking about these experiences that she wanted and kind of the people she wanted to collect. And I, as her mom, like, damn, like, this is great because this is not something that you don't see and hear this. And it's not just me that's kind of instilling this in her. It's, I think we're collectively, hopefully making a shift with our, our younger generations to really see what they value, not meaning material things, but what kind of life do you want to live? How do you want to be in the world? What experiences do you want to have versus what do you want to have? Yes, exactly. Because, because the modern world is all about the material things and it takes a certain mindset to be able to step outside of that and say, I don't care what other people think of me, but I'm not going to live my life in that square peg, I'm going to step outside that box and not be normal. In yes. order to come. Be a little crazy. This is your invitation to yeah. crazy town. Come join us. <laughs> <laughs> so what piece of advice would you give somebody who's listening and is like, this sounds intriguing. This sounds like something, this sounds like a page I would like to turn an invitation. What, what would you like to share with them? My biggest thing is do more of what you love. Find out what you love and do more of that. But something that, that you know, we touched on earlier is, is stress. Stress causes inflammation in our bodies. And that inflammation is the root cause of all dis-ease and pain outside of trauma. So if we can understand what's stressing us, why we're getting stressed, and see stress as a, as a message, if you like, as what is it that's causing me to feel so uptight? And what can I do about it? Because we can only control what we do. We have no control over our environment or other people. And chances are what stresses us is wanting to control something external to ourselves. So if we can learn to let that go and be okay with that, because that's a conditioning and a lot of people it's like a people pleasing or I've I've got to do this because other people expect it or I've got to live up to their opinion of me. If we can let go of all of that and come back into who are we authentically because authenticity vibrates at the highest level. It's higher than love. So if we can find out who we are authentically and be ourselves, then we don't have to live up to anything. We can just be who we are 
but be okay with that, be comfortable in our skin and do more of what we want to do. Mm -hmm. So perfect. So do more of what you love and take a look at what's causing you stress. And that's why in the beginning I said, you know, how do you feel in your body after making that switch? Because the stress, it is not just in our mind. We physically are impacted so much by that stress. And the more you can work to, I mean, if you think about it, crowding in, doing what you love, that is naturally going to crowd out that stress. And also knowing this is a process. This was like an evolving thing. I, sometimes people are like, well, I have the knowing now. <laughs> I, I, want, I want this to be fixed. And this is a, definitely an evolving process of self-discovery and, and healing from the inside out. Yeah. And be compassionate with yourself because quite often we could be really hard on ourselves and, and we tend to use the words that we used when we were younger. So yes, it's our voice. Yes, we're telling it ourselves, but they're not our words. They're coming from a different generation. And, you know, it's not that we're blaming them. We're just saying that that's, that's what they thought was the best thing to do at that time. And, and they probably heard those words from their parents or caregivers or school teachers in an, in an aim to help them to better themselves. So if we can bring compassion to ourselves, the same compassion we would give to other people going through challenging times, that's hugely helpful to our own health and healing. Mm -hmm. Thank you so much. I really appreciate you, the work that you're doing out there in the world. It's, it's so needed and necessary. Yeah. Thank you. And I appreciate you as well, having me on as a guest to share my own healing and, and beliefs. Yeah. Tell us, where can people find your book? My book, Heal Yourself, is on Amazon in four languages, English, Spanish, Dutch, and French. And the English version is also in Barnes & Noble in America. Wonderful. Awesome. All right. Go out and Thank get the you. book. And then lastly, I would like to finish with sharing a life hack that you have to save time, energy, or resources. Is it necessary? Do you need to do whatever you think you need to do? You know, keep it simple. Really keep it very, very simple. And, and do what you want to do and let go of other people's opinions that you should be or ought to be or need to be doing something. No, do what you want to do. Do more of yeah. it. Oh, I love that. Just the phrase, is it necessary? Is this necessary? Is it? Yeah, because we do things because we think it's necessary or we feel obligated or we should do it or somebody thinks we... You know, that's their opinion and, and therefore we need to do it. No. Should we do it? Is it necessary? Yes. I love that. Yeah. I mean, can you imagine how much time would be saved if that was applied out in life with people? Yeah. Is it necessary? Mm, actually not. I'm going to do what I love. Because then if you if you have that mindset of, is this necessary? And you have then the knowing of, oh, this is not necessary. Guess what? Those of you who don't have time because you're so busy doing other things, you now have time freed up to do the things that you love. Yes, absolutely. Ah, all right. How can people get in touch with you if they'd like to? Through my website, three W's, sarah.com. My book has links out on there to all the different Amazons. My course, Heal Yourself at Home is on there. Just everything's on there, all my socials, contact information. Perfect. And my podcast. Sorry, nearly forgot that. <laughs> Perfect. And what's the name of your podcast? <laughs> Heal Yourself with Sarah Dawkins. Wonderful. Okay. And we'll have everything linked in the notes so you can go and find all Sarah's information there. Thank you so much, Sarah. Thank you. It was fabulous to talk to you. I so much appreciate every review that I get and to encourage you to give them because they are so important to the growth of this podcast and allowing me to serve more women and reach more people. I have an offer for you. So each month I'm going to be drawing a name of someone who leaves a written review on the podcast and you will be entered to win one of my online programs, the fitness accelerator, the nutrition starter kit and the empowered transformation level one. So anyone who leaves a written review each month at the end of the month, I'll be drawing a name and you will get access to that program. Thank you so much to everyone who takes the time to leave a review. It does help grow this podcast and I appreciate it so much. 
Spirit of a Badass is a Lit Path Studios podcast and is produced by Jamie Gale and Alicia Jacobson. Music by Shane Ivers. We'll be back with another inspiring interview. Until then, keep your spirits high and your energy badass.